Hey, what's up YouTube? So here I got a cool mnemonic for brachial plexus. Um, this is fairly um, memorable, so it's going to take a second to describe all these components, but uh, ultimately I think it's quicker than trying to learn this uh, point blank off of a textbook. Um, so what I've done here is I have a drawing, obviously on the left, and a drawing on the right, with the right drawing labeled with what I'm going to be discussing uh, through this video, and so you guys can maybe uh, screenshot that or whatever. Um, but uh, just tune into what I'm saying over here so you guys can figure out uh, the brachial plexus for once and for all. Um, so one of the an an anatomical points that uh, a lot of people like you to know is that the roots of the brachial plexus emerge from the anterior, uh, between the anterior and medial um, scalene muscles. So you're here I have a banner. It's this the anterior banner saying the scale dance um, obviously misspelled school dance, um, that represents the scaling muscles. And here I also have scaling triangles as decorative items. Um, scaling tri triangle just being um, a triangle with unequal edges. Um, so another thing um, people like you to know is which roots does it um, does the brachial plexus cover? And the five up here, or the S of the scale dance, um, reminds us that we start at the C5 and um, you can just count through and go to the T1. Um, but if that doesn't suffice for you, just remember he's the one with the T, the white T, and so um, it goes to T1, um, for the, and his white T reminds you of that, obviously. Um, let me mention real quick that some of these mnemonics I'm using have been um, kind of taken from other places on the internet, so if those were your mnemonics, great job. Um, sorry, I'm using them also partly incorporated into this. And one of those mnemonics being the Real Texans drink cold beer mnemonic. Um, so here I have a Real Texan, he's back here with his cooler at the dance. He's drinking some cold beer as he chaperones these, these uh, kids with their shenanigans. Um, so the Real Texans drink cold beer kind of um, gets us through some of the more complicated um, notations of the brachial plexus. So the RT, D, C, B, representing the roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. Um, so looks like I missed cords there, so let me just add that real quick. And um, so I have obviously these, these dancers representing the um, components of the plexus. And let me just tell you which um, components are represented by which. Um, so the roots of their hair kind of represent these roots coming together. So this, these streamers represent the roots. And then the trunks of the body um, represent, um, uh, those are the converged um, roots. Um, so kind of this portion of their body, the upper part. And then these um, trunks divide, and I have that represented as their arms touching each other, obviously inappropriate groping over here. Um, and uh, those trunks um, divide and reform to become cords. So in the core region of their bodies, we have cords. And then we have, um, lastly, those cords becoming branches. And those are kind of considered the terminal portions of the uh, brachial plexus. Um, one thing to know is just remember that these guys are each kind of dancing with only one hand on each other. Um, so don't bring two divisions um, down from maybe the posterior cord, like you might be tempted or something. So this can remind you, this drawing can remind you that you just have one division coming and um, she's obviously not dancing with him, so she has, there's no division coming from um, um, this portion over to the, um, the merging with the lower uh, trunk. So that reminds me, I have a basic um, layout of these trunks. Um, so we name each of these trunks um, from um, upper, middle to lower, um, because this is in the upper portion. So this is kind of just rotated in the arm, like so. Obviously, the scaling muscles um, of the neck, and then this being the upper, um, middle, and lower um, part of the trunk. So, um, those trunks, as I say, uh, divide to divisions, and then we name them as lateral, posterior, and medial. The reason being that they have this relationship to the axillary artery, which I've denoted with this red line running out of her axilla on her chic uh, prom dress or whatever. Um, and so her being posterior to that line reminds us this is the posterior cord. Um, this being lateral is the lateral cord. 
and this being medial is the medial cord. You can remember this is the medial side actually because um, this uh, meat loaf, which we're going to talk about in a minute, is on the medial side of the drawing. So this is the medial um, side with the meat loaf. Um, another thing people like you to know is uh, which there's some nerves coming off of the plexus, not just these end branches. And what are those nerves, and where do they? Which part of the uh, plexus do they emerge from? Is it from the trunks or the or the cords or whatever, right? Um, so first, let me just say that we have um, two root, two nerves emerging from roots and that's specifically on the upper plexus side. Um, so from the C5, um, 6, and 7, we have the long thoracic nerve, that being represented by these crowns. Um, so the reason why I have these crowns is they have a serrated edge, similar to the serratus anterior muscle, which is actually innervated by the long thoracic nerve. I think they call it a long thoracic nerve because it has to come from the long distance from the brachial plexus down to this um, side of the thorax. Um, so yeah, that's long thoracic nerve um, innervating the serratus anterior, and you remember easily from C5 to C6 and 7, um, coming from roots, right? And then I have also this tiara with this sharp edge to remind us that a paralysis of the long thoracic nerve gives us a winged scapula, so this sort of point on the tiara reminds us of winged scapula. All right, we have one more nerve coming from roots, and that is the dorsal scapular nerve, and I have this represented by his dorsal scapular um, Jedi braid coming off of his um, um, dorsal scapular, or out of his root, the root of his hair, and that being the C5 root. Um, and a C5 root gives a dorsal scapular nerve, and that nerve innervates the um, rhomboid muscle. And so I have a rhomboid braid um, representing that. Just a quick note, some people also show the dorsal scapular nerve innervating also the levator scapulae muscles. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, it's really a partial innervation from the dorsal scapular nerve where the um, upper uh, roots also have some innervation on the levator scapulae. Um, so maybe just primarily remember the dorsal scapular nerve for the rhomboid muscle, rhomboid little bead here. And uh, remember that being from the C5 root. Next we have a tr the trunk of his body, remember, and he's the upper trunk, he's the upper class, I mean, upper trunk. And then we have this supra pop collar for the suprascapular nerve, and that nerve innervates the supraspinatus uh, and also the infraspinatus. And so the popped, this popped collar reminds us of a scapular spine where this line, this logo, this sort of design line, reminds us of both the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles um, being innervated um, by that suprascapular nerve. Um, and don't confuse that with the subscapular nerve, which is actually going to be uh, represented over here, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, why is he smoking at the dance? Well, he's smoking herb at the dance, H-E-R-B at the dance, to remind us of an herb Duchenne palsy um, being a damage of the 5th and 6th, C5 and C6 um, portions of the brachial plexus. And that gives us a waiter tip sign, so you can see by his hand is in this waiter tip sign position, it's because he's a drug dealer and obviously he's taking money from um, someone in the dance that he's um, you know, selling some joints to or whatever. And so he's in this waiter tip position. And so that reminds us that the upper plexus injury causes a waiter tip sign, also called a herb palsy. Um, next we have from um, also from the upper trunk. So here from his upper trunk portion, we have a sub, uh, uh, what is it, sub, yeah, um, clavian nerve and the subclavian nerve um, innervating the subclavius uh, muscle. If you hear that sound, that's my cat in the background uh, scratching. <laughs> um, but the subclavian nerve innervating the subclavius uh, muscle um, and um, that's that. So I have this design element on his shirt representing the subclavian um, nerve off of the upper trunk. Um, next, I have this gym membership falling out of his pocket. That's the pec gym, the area PEK here on the side for the lateral pectoral nerve. Remember, he's the lateral port, he's a lateral cord now. So this is his cord region. So from the lateral cord, we have a pectoral nerve, and that's the lateral pectoral nerve. I say lateral because um, we also have a medial pectoral nerve. So he's also a member of the pec gym, and we have a pec gym membership falling out of his pocket. And so that's, this is actually the median, medial pectoral nerve um, from the median, medial cord now, remember. 
Um, then we have this um, this lateral cord branching off and giving a, a musculocutaneous nerve. And so this guy, he's a muscular, cute British guy, and so that reminds us of musculocutaneous nerve represented by his leg. And also this portion of his shirt that says BBC, um, the, that being the muscles um, innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve, those being biceps, brachialis, and coracobrachialis. And notice that she's just grabbing right in that region where those muscles are, um, biceps, um, brachialis, uh, or brachialis, biceps, and coracobrachialis, just to be clear. Um, so that kind of wraps up this side here. Let's go to the middle portion. Um, so we, uh, again, as I said, we have the middle trunk. Um, no major nerves coming off here, but then we have this core uh, region. Um, so we have, um, first let me say, the subscapular nerve. And her s underneath um, this, this kind of in this sc um, scapular region of her body, we have this ombre of her hair, this dyeing of her hair, and um, kind of an under dyeing of her hair. And that reminds us of a subscapular nerve. And that, of course, um, innervating muscles in the sub subscapular region, those being the um, teres major and um, what is it, the subscapularis muscle. Um, so that, um, just as a note to be complete, um, the subscapular nerve have, has a upper and a lower portion, maybe denoted by some element over here, you could think. Um, upper and lower portion, where the upper portion um, serves the subscapularis, and the lower portion, the teres major, um, that of course being a lower portion in the body, so easy to remember that. Now I have this um, design element in her dress, um, that representing the latissimus dorsi muscle. You can see this is right where kind of where the latissimus dorsi muscle is, and that reminds us of the thoracodorsal nerve. So this position being the thoracodorsal portion of her body, um, the thoracodorsal nerve may be um, represented at, kind of with the strings of her dress here, um, um, coming off of the posterior cord. Because remember, this is posterior to the axillary artery. Right, posterior cord gives the thoracal dorsal nerve, innervating the latissimus dorsi. See how easy this is with the drawing. Um, then we have. I'll explain why his hands here in a second. Um, of course, that first representing the um, the uh, division here um, coming onto this this portion of the brachial plexus. But uh, that's an, I'll, I'll say further in a second. But then I, we also have branches coming off the posterior cord, those being the axillary branch represented by this leg and the radial branch represented by this leg. First with the axillary branch, we have um, these ASICs representing the axillary branch. And then we also have this delta, this uh, tattoo, it's a delta in a circle, if you can kind of see that. Um, so the delta in the circle representing first the deltoid muscle innervated by the axillary muscle uh, nerve. Um, which is a branch of the posterior cord. And then we also have the teres minor muscle, which is, is represented by the circle, um, being um, also innervated by the axillary nerve. And so the circle, of course, um, being our round and circle being the, um, the meaning of teres in um, Latin or Greek, um, whichever that is. And then we have also the radial nerve. So I have this rays coming off of this um, tattoo, the radial nerve. Um, and this beast in the middle. So this rays and the beast um, remind us of the beast mnemonic, B-E-A-S-T, um, the radial nerve innervating those muscles and those being the brachioradialis, the extensors, the anconius, the supinator, and the triceps. So kind of an odd bunch of muscles to remember, but um, you can remember it's the extensors, you know, the arm, and then we also have or the forearm, then we have the triceps, so, so those are also extensors, and then we also have the supinator, and then we have the anconius, and then the brachioradialis, so um, just group those together as a beast mnemonic is probably the best way to um, keep those in your head, that being from the radial nerve, radi all these um, rays coming off the tattoo. All right, next, let me just say, um, what do we have here? Uh, we have the median nerve, so these guys come together in the middle, in the median of um, this dance here, um, reminds us of the median nerve. And what these guys are doing is they're really just flexing on each other, um, flexing over this girl, but they're flexing on each other, so that reminds you the median nerve is for flexors. 
Um, and second, they're also knocking this meatloaf off the table. Remember I told you the meatloaf um, to re remind us of the medial portion of the drawing, but also of the median nerve and the loaf muscles innervated. So visually you can see this extended kind of in this region, the median nerve innervating the loaf muscles. Um, and that being a, an exception um, because um, the, the loaf muscles are muscles of the hand and the um, ulnar nerve, which we'll talk about in a second, normally innervates the hand muscles. Um, but the um, loaf mnemonic reminds us of the lumbricals, and that's the first and second lumbricals. And I have the median nerve portion representing the first and second as um, the stripes. <coughs> Sorry, I gotta sneeze, I can't sneeze. Um, this, the stripes on their shoes, the first and second um, lumbricals, and then the OAF muscles. I'm not going to name those off right now. Just look up the loaf mnemonic real quick. And those are the other hand muscles innervated by the median nerve. Now, the rest of the hand muscles are um, innervated by the um, ulnar nerve. And we have the ulnar nerve represented by his foot. So this um, being a branch of the, media, uh, the medial cord. Um, so the hand muscles innervated by the ulnar nerve. And I have this little, this paper um, origami um, thing that, you know, people used to use in maybe middle school and high school, this little game where you fold up the things and kind of switch them around. And I think you know what I'm talking about. It's this little origami game. And that reminding us of both the, um, the ulnar nerve and the um, claw hand that you develop in the case of a lesion of the ulnar nerve. Um, and the ulnar nerve, of course, um, innervating primarily hand muscles, except for the loaf muscles of the me that are innervated by the median nerve. Now, I said also these guys are flexing on each other, and um, they're, they're, that being that the median nerve um, primarily innervates the flexors. However, the ulnar nerve also has some of those flexors, just two of them, and that's the flexor carpi ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundus. And I have that built into the mnemonic as this Volker note that says F star, C star, U. And obviously this clumsy guy was gonna give it to him, um, but it fell out of his pocket along with this little um, paper toy he's got here. So that representing the, the F and the C and the U representing the flexor carpi ulnaris. And then I have um, maybe something more subtle is this little, um, this little German flag on his um, shoulder um, that representing the FDP, um, the Free Democratic Party, or the Frei, what is it, Frei Demokratische Party of Germany, um, FDP. Maybe that's hard for you guys to remember, but um, that works for me. But um, the FDP um, also being a flexor innervated by the ulnaris, so that's an exception. Two flexors innervated by the ulnaris, the FCU and the FDP. Um... I think I've about covered it here, guys. Um, just keep in mind that real Texans drink cold beer. Keep in mind this is pop collar, the hand back here. Oh yeah, the drop hand. Um, and then I also have him in a sort of claw hand position because remember the ulnar nerve paralysis gives you claw hand. Um, but um, a, a paralysis of this radia the radialis, uh, the radial nerve, um, produces a drop hand lesion. So basically he needs to drop his, or a drop wrist re lesion um, so he needs to drop his wrist off her um, behind, um, reminding us that the radial nerve paralysis gives you a drop wrist um, sort of lesion. Um, one more thing is also this clumsy kid reminds us that another name for ulnar nerve uh, paralysis is clump, the clump, what is it, clumpkey um, palsy. So the clumsy kid, the ulnar nerve paralysis is a clump, clumpkey palsy. I have it written here, it's K L U M K. P K E palsy. Um, yeah, I think I have that about about it. Um, j just as a note, these um, roots um, converging on the the guys and not on the girl, just to help you further. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, but if you like the mnemonic for it helped you, please hit like. And thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and have fun with the brachial plexus. Cheers.